Today, the best perfect start for spawning in the snow on the mountains, utilising the hang glider to get yourself the modern axe, a pistol, a torch, a machete and clear out the rebreather cave in two days. Let's go. So I probably will do the same for the rest of the starting points and give you top tips about where to go and what you should do first. But this one, obviously landing in snow, you have got a whole ton of resources just like normal, so pick them up. Then you want to head to the cave that's directly in the mountains, just behind you and above. It should be relatively easy, you can follow the stream upwards and it should lead you there. You'll come across the ice lake, obviously frozen over, and a bunch more loot. The most important being the can opener. There's only one other location that you can pick up a can opener, which is on the beach, on the other spawn point. It's nestled in the snow just by the tent, sometimes it can be hard to see. Obviously gather any more resources that you come across here, and you can even use this as your very first save point. Head over to the ice cave of course as well and pick up some more loot. As soon as you come back out, head left, go past where you picked up the can opener and keep going straight. You basically want to be going along the slope here. Go across the river and you still know you're going in the right direction. And try to hug the side of this mountain as much as possible, keeping yourself just by the tree line. Along the way gather plenty of leaves to hopefully make you some leaf armour if you really want it and some sticks. You'll eventually come to maybe an edge or a cliff. You want to head down here slightly and again go just to the edge of the woods here. Keep walking through again using the cliff and the mountain to stay on the left and you'll come to this more rocky cliff area. Some pretty sweet views from this point of the mountain and the rest of the island. And use this moment to go ahead and make some of the armour that you've picked up hopefully with the cloth and the leaves and make yourself a spear. Pretty much stay on this same level, you'll go through some more brush and undergrowth and effectively we're going towards the hang glider. You'll come out by another point where obviously you can save your game and then head over to the edge of the cliff to pick up the hang glider itself. So to me there's different ways of thinking with this. Do you want to set up a base straight away or do you want to go and get something to help protect you or maybe even complete one of the early caves? In my mind I think it's better to go and get some gear and then think about where you're going to set up a base. A big part of Sons of the Forest at the moment is that there is the cave with the rebreather and it's on the far far edges of the map. Once you've got that you don't really have too many other reasons to go back up there again. So we're going to use the hang glider to effectively fly over to a couple of key points using cliffs to help us and pretty much avoid all danger all running through the forest and pretty much being safe for the first day maybe even two days. If you haven't used a glider before you just need to use the compass or the magnet as it is as it's pretty much a steering mechanism. If you angle it down and do a dive that will allow you to get more air and you can keep going and get further and higher up if you wanted to. We're heading for that beach that's where you really want to go as that's where we're going to pick up the gun. So it's a pretty clear and easy landmark to see, you just got to go over the large lake that's in the forest below you and you'll be able to land there. Now I did want to check some other stuff along the coast and there's one more spot you can go just to get a few more additional resources. So basically head to the coast and keep to the left hand side. You go across quite the elevated grass area which isn't too bad a spot for a base if you wanted a cliff top home. And once you see this strip of sand, you can go ahead and start to land because there is a couple of resources laying around here. You'll find a small boat and a couple of crates. Not much, but as I said, it doesn't hurt to gather some of this stuff. So make sure you pick up your hang glider again, head back towards the point where we were going to go originally to pick up the gun. And you're going to be heading up this little hill here by the coast. And effectively we're going to get on top of that cliff so we can get some more air. Now you actually don't need to be that high, I'm going to show you a bit later that you can actually jump from pretty low height and get a lot of air or be able to go quite far. So anywhere along here you should be able to jump off and pretty much be able to do it. And also look out for dropping your hang glider by accident when it gets nudged on the floor or against trees. You might pick up some berries en route as well so there's no harm in doing that. And whenever you're ready just jump off and then we're going to keep with the sea to our left hand side and keep going along the coast. You'll eventually come to where you can see the actual lifeboat and you know what, go straight into the water. Maybe a bit cavalier, you could just land on the beach and swim over, not having to worry about pushing your hang glider afterwards, but you might as well, I thought it was pretty funny just jumping into the water like this. Obviously pick up the gun and the GPS locator. So of course there are sharks, you just got to time it so that they've gone and swam round to the ocean side 
and then you can jump into the water and start pushing your hang glider back to sea. If you get in the middle of it, you can actually steer it a lot better. If you do find it's still a bit of a struggle, go on the outside and push it the right way. I know some people have problems with it, it's a bit glitchy, but it should be okay. The shark might come to say hello, but as long as you've got at least one piece of green leaf armour, and you'll make it back to shore pretty safely. Go ahead and kill some of the tortoises to get some meat and try and take out a few seagulls as well to get some feathers. Now go ahead and craft a bow and some arrows as well as there's plenty of rocks on the beach here too. There's more resources obviously plus the rail gun for the pistol. And of course don't forget to go ahead and destroy the boom box or take it with you if you really want for later. I like to make sure I've got plenty of circuit boards. So glider in hand, now we're going to go up to this small cliff here and that is literally all you need to get some air that you can actually go ahead and start gliding further. You actually find a bunch of yarrow and other plants maybe as well as you're climbing up along here. And pretty much head back to where you can see the overlook of some of the items that you just gathered and got off the beach. And go ahead and jump off and you should be able to get some air. We're now going to keep going along the coastline all the way over to that cave on the coast in the top corner. Presuming you guys don't have a lot of experience with the maps, I'm trying to be pretty descriptive of the locations you're going to be seeing rather than focus too much on the minimap, as you can't always look at the actual minimap when you're using the hang glider, even though this one's actually in my hands right now. So as I said, you can go a bit low and then you should be able to gain a little bit more momentum and a little bit more air. As long as you don't pull back too much, if the glider goes up too sharply into the sky, you'll end up actually starting to fall. So make sure the compass and the magnet there is pretty much on level, but you can get a really good amount of air here. We're going to be heading over to this cliff and we're going to get another batch of air now as well. You'll find this waypoint here with the sticks and the sail. And so our fourth dive of our trip so far. The worst that comes to worst is you do hit the ground and you have to just keep exploring and walking up the coastline. So as said, we are heading to that cave location on the coast, but we are going to stop off at one more point and this is where we're going to stay for the night. We come to the beach where it's covered in big large rocks and a river going down and you should see the remains as well as a couple of kayaks. This is where you're going to pick up a camouflage suit for Virginia as well as the binoculars. And then just follow the small path that leads up from the beach towards the forest and you should find a save point and this is where you're going to sleep for the night. In the morning go ahead and kill some of the terrapins if you want some more additional meat that's in the pool water nearby and obviously make sure you picked up all the resources. Go ahead and replenish any of the vitals that you need, food and water. And again we're going to head upwards now the cliff that's on the left hand side as we're facing the forest. So keep following that small cliff all the way up to its almost highest point as a hill. You'll also pick up some more of the natural flowers and you should just be able to jump. As long as you're careful, you can avoid the trees and you should be able to now carry on along the coast towards that cave that was marked. Obviously, if you spawned on the beach, then you're already here. So we'll have to think about what the perfect start is for that and that will be coming soon. Obviously, there's no resources here like there is normally when you spawn on the beach. You do want to make a spawn point just here maybe so you don't have to go anywhere further but you should have plenty of tarp from our small journey already and then we're going to go straight into the cave. Now I'm playing on normal difficulty here. The first room or section you come to there'll be some small resources and then you climb through until eventually you come to the second big section where you'll actually come across some of the mutants creepies. Don't mess around, use the stuff that you've already acquired like the grenades to take care of some of these or molotovs. If you get it right you can probably take out two or three of them with one grenade. The spear is going to be your friend here for keeping at range any that do come and attack you afterwards. So it might be tempting to go ahead and put the skinned armour on from these guys straight away but try to resist. Obviously go ahead and skin them but as soon as you start putting that armour on they can actually sense you more. They seem to be able to smell or focus on it. With that grenade toss or two I managed to kill the fingers here as well. That is usually on the right hand side. I've done plenty of guides for this particular cave so I don't really want to rehash it too much but just make sure with all these bones that you're picking up and the rope that you've accumulated so far you go ahead and make some bone armour and try and save the creepy stuff for much later. You obviously take the right hand side fork when you see them bones and it will lead you to eventually the stun gun and a leather jacket and then taking care of some more creepies and babies. In previous times this cave can be over flooded with creatures sometimes but that was a glitch there shouldn't be as many to deal with. 
and you eventually make it through, picking up the stun gun, like I said, the leather jacket that's hanging from the ceiling. So now you're heading back to where the bones were, and this time we're going to go down the river, or the little stream that's in here, taking care of more of the creepies that you encounter. Keep aiming for the heads, for the spears, for the puffies here. And after making your way all the way through, hugging the right hand side, you'll come into the cavern with the shark, the rebreather. Do remember to go over to the left hand side to pick up some more juice and obviously get some more wire that's usually here. A lot of players miss that. Pick up the rebreather gear and you're good to go. Throw an arm or a leg to distract the shark and then just swim outwards. Sometimes if you go back the way that you came, more enemies do spawn, but otherwise this is just more safer, quicker. And there you go, that is complete in the cave pretty much within the first two days. Nice and easy, we picked up a gun and even more, but we're not done. Pick up the hang glider and head over to the cliff above the entrance to the cave. Small run and jump, and that is gonna be enough to get you across the bay, where we're gonna go and now pick up the machete and more. There's another save point here as well and plenty of other good resources that you'll need. And now you're ready to go wherever you want. You can go straight and get the new modern axe. You can go straight to the cave with the 3D printer in and stuff. But basically you'll be going back in land now with no real reason to return to any of these areas until much later when you want to go and pick up a shotgun. You've saved yourself maybe a couple of days of running through the forest worried about getting attacked by the muddies and cannibals absolutely filled to the brim with resources and you should have been able to craft yourself a good amount of armor or at least have enough of the creepy armor now to keep you going there is a large cliff just above you so if you want to take the extra time to go all the way up there you could do and then make yourself way to the 3d printer cave or like i said the modern axe which is more or less inland you just got to follow the river where it meets the ocean here and it pretty much will take you up that way and towards the cliff with the gps tracker on it Otherwise, even a small jump from the smaller cliff just above that point will get you along the beach and the coast quite a bit. But yeah, my best advice is to go and make the extra effort to get into the top of that cliff just above where you got the machete and aim and go for that green circle. Like I said, use the river below you that you can see going into the woods as a frame reference if you can't keep track of the GPS locator. It does get trickier because you are pretty much aiming up higher, you've got to keep climbing and there's a lot more trees in the way. But as long as you keep following that river, you'll eventually make it to where you need to go. Did you know you don't even have to climb the cliff to go ahead and chop the rope? You can use your bow and arrow to shoot it instead. You've picked up the torch as well as the GPS locator. Of course, on top of that cliff where you do cut the rope though, there are some more supplies, so it's definitely worth still going up there. The modern axe is just to the bottom of the cliffs towards the left hand side so you don't really want to be jumping or going too far with the glider on this occasion now. The gliders do respawn after a few days so you can pretty much just dump it or try and take it with you but you won't really have too much more need of it. Everywhere you really want to go now is going to be in much denser wood and unless you've climbed really high you're not going to be able to get across it as well. But I'm just showing you how I found the actual modern axe. You can see it's right below. So it's super close to where that cliff was with the GPS locator. Can obviously save here as well. And there you go. That's your first two days in Sons of the Forest. Starting out day three with a pistol, a bunch of ammo, the modern axe, the machete, a torch, and a whole ton of resources. I'm going to try different variations and see if there's any other better combinations, but to me, that is the best way, working your way back in after you cleared out the stuff that you need on the coast. Got any tips? Put them down below and look out for more when I do the perfect starts for the other locations too. Until next time, Ratbags, laters.